I'm back and now we're going to talk about how does the Sun heat up the Earth's atmosphere. Now we've already talked about this a little bit when we talked about the climate of Venus and we said that Venus was so hot because the heat was being trapped by the atmosphere. So let's talk about that in a little bit more detail. So first you've got these things that are called greenhouse gases and certainly CO2 is one of them. So carbon dioxide acts like a blanket that keeps the earth warm. But there are other greenhouse gases. So like for example water is a greenhouse gas and so is methane. So there are other things that act like a greenhouse gas. So what's going on is that light from the sun uh, a lot of it is in the form of ultraviolet light and also it's in the form of visible light. So do you remember that uh, Earth's atmosphere had these windows that would allow certain frequencies of light to come through? Well we've already discussed that the gamma rays and the x-rays can't get through. Now there are some ultraviolet light that can get through our atmosphere. So most of it is blocked by the ozone layer, but let's assume that a little bit of the ultraviolet can get through and certainly visible light can get through our atmosphere because we can obviously see here on the Earth's surface. So what happens is here's the Earth's surface down here and then let's have some ultraviolet light coming in and then also let's have some visible light coming in and they're both going to hit the surface of the earth and are going to be absorbed by the rocks here at the surface. Then what happens is that the surface of the earth re-emits the light but it changes it from ultraviolet and visible light into infrared. So now the ground is going to give off uh, infrared light, which is heat. Well, that heat is going to rise into the clouds and once it gets up here though, once it gets back up into the, the clouds, it, the clouds will not allow the infrared to get out. So the clouds would allow ultraviolet and visible light to get out, but it wouldn't allow infrared. So as more and more of this light is coming in, then this infrared starts to build up and so the planet begins to warm up. Now eventually though it gets so hot that some of that infrared does leak off into outer space, but without the effects of um, the greenhouse gases, the climate of the earth would be much colder than what it is today. So actually the greenhouse effect, as long as it's not a runaway greenhouse effect, is actually pretty good. So if you want to watch a video on this, you can watch one that's called uh, What is the Greenhouse Effect by NASA Climate Kids? And that will give you some more information about that. Uh, let's also talk about what does the oceans, how do they affect the climate on Earth. So in that picture there, of um, it shows the Atlantic Ocean and then it shows North America and it shows Europe. I'd like for you to find England. So where is England on that map? Okay, found it. All right, now I want you to basically go straight across the Atlantic Ocean and you're going to find Labrador, Canada. So notice that both England and Labrador, Canada are at the same latitude. So that means they're both going to get about the same amount of sunlight, which you would think that would mean that they would have the same climates. But look at what England looks like in March and then look at what Labrador, Canada looks like in March. And you notice that Labrador is much cooler than what England is. So what's, got to, what's that got to do with it? 
England is surrounded by water. And so uh, during the, the summertime, what happens is the excess heat that would normally be heating up England goes into the water and heats up the water instead. During the winter time, uh, when England should be cold, that water gives off its heat that it's been storing all summer long and it keeps England warm. So anytime that you, you have a planet that has large amounts of water, that's gonna help to moderate the climate so that it's not so cold and it's not so hot. Okay, uh, next we're going to talk about actually how do you produce weather. And so we'll do that in the next segment.